astronomer, physicist, botanist. Sir Bernard Lovell's contribution to the world of science is globally acknowledged, but he also had an impact on the world of botany. He had a passion for trees, and as a scientist, was keen to understand and catalogue the plants he studied. Both the Lovell Radio Telescope and Jodrell Bank itself are now UNESCO World Heritage Sites and still dominate the Cheshire landscape as a tribute to their founder. But Sir Bernard left other legacies as well. He set up Arboreta both at his house in Swettenham and at Jodrell Bank as an outlet for his horticultural interests. He extended his collection from plant exchanges and by donations in lieu of lecture fees. Today, the Lovell Quinta Arboretum is of international importance. This is its story. It was a garden of opportunities. It evolved. I'm not sure how, what drove him to, to expand the original garden, but I do know that once he started, there was no stopping. <laughs> In 1948, a young radio astronomer named Bernard Lovell bought the Quinter, a country house in the village of Swettenham, near Congleton in Cheshire. Although he was heavily engaged in the setting up and running of Jodrell Bank Telescope at the time, as a keen horticulturalist, he also made time to develop his garden near the house. I remember it as, a, as an evolving, growing garden. Now it's in, it's in its middle age now. So beautiful, but so, so different from my earliest memories. All the ideas, all the ideas were Sir Bernard's. He had all his plans, he'd sit in his study and I, turn up at nine o'clock and he say, right Peter, we're going to plant this tree here, we're going to do this, and he trusted me to plant them and guard them properly, you know, to stop the rabbits eating them and everything else, so that's the, th that's the thing, to do it his way. In the early 1960s, Sir Bernard's elder son Brian came home in the holidays from his university studies of geology to find that to his surprise, a hollow had been scooped in the field, revealing sands beneath the surface. Sir Bernard was planning the creation of a lake, but the sand bed proved to be highly porous. The solution to the problem was both obvious and time consuming. The hollow had to be filled with impermeable clay, which involved hard work from the whole family, including Sir Bernard's wife Joyce and children Susan, Brian, Judy, Roger and Philippa, as well as many unsuspecting visitors. It was hard work. The fire brigade came and attempted to fill it after it had been excavated, but within seconds it had emptied it because it was just sand. So we had lorry loads of clay, blew it, and anyone who uh, dared to visit the, the family were, were marched down here and given a pair of wellies and asked to get on with it. <laughs> yeah, you had to be quite brave to come and stay with mum and dad in those days. The lake is still a special place for all the Lovell children decades later. Roger and his sister Judy remain very fond of the area where the lake is now, and in particular the hollow oak trees at the western end. Visitors to the house were delighted to walk around the lake, take a rowing boat out on the still waters, or just sit on a bench and watch the varied wildlife. That's a place where he'd shot before with Lady Lovell. And he'd watch the lake, and the, he loved he loved the the birds, and and in the springtime, of course, that was the breeding place for frogs. Once all the hard work on the lake was finished, Sir Bernard planted the western half of the old Quinter field with avenues, one on each side of the new water feature, commemorating his 1958 wreath lectures for the BBC and his knighthood in 1961. He had the idea of building these avenues, and just went ahead and did it. Sir Bernard were always after some help and one day I was available for some help for him and we started with the Manchester poplars down the other side of the lake then we started with the, uh, I think it was the Birch Avenue uh, the Great Avenue was planted in the 90s with the scouts we, we planted all that it was Sir Bernard's vision to have a three-quarter mile 
as he called it, stretch along there. In 1996, at the age of 83, Sir Bernard decided to pass his life's work to other guardians and the Cheshire Wildlife Trust acquired the freehold. They had it for a little while, but felt that their expertise was more in wildlife conservation than, than looking after a tree collection. And it was decided that uh, the Arboretum should come over to Tatton Garden Society. Sir Bernard was still living at the Quinter and remained active on the site. Over a period of a few years, it became apparent that more in the way of skilled work needed to be done at the Arboretum, and Roderick Taylor came on board to carry out day-to-day -day maintenance and curation of what had become an internationally important collection. The collection at the Little Quinter Arboretum was really based on the four volumes of Trees and Shrubs Hardy in the British Isles, uh, which was a series of books listing the trees and shrubs that literally would survive in generally throughout Britain. And Sir Bernard's plan was to actually have one example of every tree and shrub listed in these four volumes. Now theoretically, according to his records, he achieved it all by about 50. He kept records of everything. Everything was written down and everything that was planted was put down on the plan of the old arboretum. He would say, oh, pop over the office and we'd spend maybe two and a half hours sitting talking about trees and plants. And we, it, we fed off each other, you know, because we were both enthusiastic. We both appreciated each other's knowledge, which is great. And what I've tried to do is to try, if you like, to continue that policy of this broad collection. Sir Bernard Lovell died in 2012 at the age of 98 and left a lasting legacy. In 2014, the Arboretum was renamed from the Quinter Arboretum to the Lovell Quinter Arboretum in his honour. Fast forward to the present day and the Arboretum is a place of quiet beauty with grassy paths and elegant trees. The Arboretum is a place of scientific study as well as recreation and is home to three national collections, ash, pine and oak. They provide an important resource for gardeners, researchers and those interested in botanical history. These living libraries are hugely important as they ensure that a diverse range of plants, some of which may no longer be commercially available, continue to thrive. They also play an important role in the study of disease such as ash dieback. The Arboretum's most recently accredited collection is the Oaks or Quercus, which has been named the Sir Bernard Lovell Collection as a tribute. It's maintained and run by a team of volunteers from the Tatton Garden Society under Roderick's leadership and is open to the public for a small fee. We're delighted if people become members and support the society, but anybody can come and visit on 364 days of the year. We obviously operate through curator and, and volunteers. The maintenance of the Arboretum is quite expensive, so we are dependent on those donations to, to keep the Arboretum open, particularly for those who are looking for tranquility or for those who, who want to learn about trees and shrubs. The Lovell family remember their childhood with great fondness, and for Roger, it's a source of continuing pleasure that the view from among the trees remains unchanged. Modern day visitors can still enjoy the same view today as they stroll among the avenues of majestic trees of this special place and enjoy Sir Bernard's legacy. Who started it? Sir Bernard Lovell. And I think people have an absolute great respect for him. To be part of this and what it's become now has been fantastic because it's just nice to see so many people enjoying it because the garden were very private, Sir Bernard were very private and he only opened them occasionally when special visitors came along like the Duke of Westminster which was fabulous. But to uh, come along now as we do, Cynthia and I look at all the trees and a good majority we've planted or I've planted and it's, it's great to see them all doing so well and everything. Thanks to the hard work of the Tatton Garden Society I'd like to think it's got a very bright future. I hope so.